So that was a uh, single arm. The, the trial that led to the approval uh, of Eltrolopag in frontline aplastic anemia alongside with immunosuppressive therapy was a single arm trial that separated, it were 92 patients, roughly 30 patients in each cohort. Uh, and, the, and the first cohort uh, used Eltrolopag starting on day 14 and gave Eltrolopag for a total of six months alongside horse ATG cyclosporin. Now the reason there was this two week gap because there was a concern that there could be toxicity by giving horse ATG cyclosporin and Eltrolopag at the same time, especially liver toxicity. So there was this two week delay. Um, so the association with Eltrolopag and these regimens actually turned out to be pretty safe and tolerable. So for the next 30 patients, uh, Eltrolopag was continued uh, starting on day 14, but the course was abbreviated to three months to try to decrease drug exposure and potential complications from that continued drug exposure. Uh, some patients lost their response between three and six months. So for the last cohort, the uh, Eltrolopag duration was extended to six months. Uh, and because the concerns of toxicity between Eltrolopag and the other agents uh, minimized, it was then started on day one. So now you're having 150 milligrams starting on day one and giving it for six months. That group appeared to be the most efficacious group in terms of overall response rate of about uh, 90 percent uh, and cr complete of 58 percent. So this um, uh, led to the uh, submission for approval uh, given that in about 100 patients, the overall in total uh, response rate and uh, complete was higher than anything we have seen uh, in the past. So the long-term results of relapse and clonal evolution, which is a, uh, a complication that's been followed, are, are being gathered as we speak. Uh, but uh, so far, there hasn't been a, a, a safety signal regarding these late events. So this is the trial, actually, that was designed and led to the uh, approval of Eltrauma Bag in association with horse ATG cyclosporin in frontline. This continuing Eltrauma Bag is actually a very important question. And we noticed that in some patients in the refractory protocol, uh, some patients actually were able to be taken off Eltrauma Bag. This observation started out somewhat serendipitously in a patient who had to stop the drug for, uh, for a reason. Uh, and his counts never dropped and kept going up and up and up uh, off therapy, which raised the possibility that, wow, maybe, we, maybe patients don't, have to, don't need to be on this therapy forever. Maybe we can try to stop it. So some criteria of robustness of response were developed uh, based on hemoglobin and hemoglobin greater than 10, neutrophil greater than 1,000, a platelet count greater than 50, to see if patients who achieve that level of response, could they be then tapered very quickly to off? And indeed, uh, uh, many patients were able to tolerate this continuation, meaning that they were tapered to off their counts, you know, maybe fluctuated for a bit, but didn't drop significantly. And they were able to maintain hematopoiesis and blood counts on their own without the need of continued chronic oral uh, therapy. Now, some patients have actually shown relapse, but responded again in the majority to re resumption of uh, Eltrauma Pack. So in the refractory uh, experience, that has uh, shown to be the case. Now, what's even more interesting is that when you give Eltrolopag from day one at 150 milligrams, instead of doing a dose escalation like was done in the first pivotal trial of 50, 75, 100, 125, 150 every two weeks dose increment, there was a follow-up cohort that just started at 150 on day one for refractory patients and given it for six months. So the response rate overall there was about 49 percent. Some patients responded between three and six, indicating that giving another three months from three to six is actually beneficial for some patients, kind of establishing the, the, the duration of Eltrauma Pack in the refractory setting. But what's even more interesting, that of the 19 responders out of this 49 patient cohort, uh, 18 had robust response, excuse me, 39 patient cohort, 39. Uh, 19 responded, but 18 had a robust response. And of these 18, 13 tolerated discontinuation of l pad without having to go back on it. And of the patients who relapsed, they res responded going back on, on l pad. So uh, that's about 70% of patients are actually who had a robust response, actually, who uh, were able to go off, uh, uh, off therapy. So that's, it's real. It's real, and it's obviously beneficial to patients not having to be on uh, uh, chronic treatment.